Hi, and welcome to the Prophetic Podcast. I'm Kay Nash. Um, We are in season one, episode five, and we are in the season of the deep. And today we're going to be talking about becoming a spiritual champion and walking in your prophetic potential. Here we go. (laughs) Have you ever seen someone get a prophetic word over their life? And the word is amazing. And years go by and there seems to be no movement towards the word. Or maybe it isn't someone else. Maybe it's you. (laughs) You try to comfort yourself by saying, just wait on the Lord. You know, you're just waiting on the Lord. But you can't help but wonder, did I do something wrong? Did God even say that? Why are other people walking in their promises and I'm not? I completely get that. I completely understand that feeling. Um, You know, we all have prophetic potential. We all have prophetic potential. Um, God makes everyone for a purpose before you were born. You know, the Bible says this in Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. God chose who you were supposed to be before he even created you. He had an idea in mind. You know, God is a detailed, planned creator. You know, he does this entire thing for a reason. He doesn't just haphazardly make you in some workshop or something. He thinks about it, he plans it, and then he makes you. Well, because God made us, we must seek God in order to find our purpose. We can't just, you know, just try all these other things, you know, go through all these other hoops and try to figure out how we feel in order to find our purpose. You know, finding our purpose is mostly about seeking God. Because only God knows why he created you, okay? Nobody else knows. Now, yes, a prophet or a pastor or some leader in your life or a close friend that hears the Holy Spirit well might confirm God's purpose in your life. But God was the one that originated it and God is the one that knows it, Jesus. So simply put, find God because God knows your purpose. Find God because God knows our purpose. Now, just because God's built us for a purpose doesn't mean we'll walk in it. And I think that's really hard for people to understand, but we have to move from this place of just having potential, God has put purpose in us, to really walking in that purpose. Have you ever met someone and you're like, they have potential? And sometimes that can be said in a good or bad way. You know, you'd be like, wow, you know, you see a a young boy and he's really good at sports and you'd be like, wow, he has potential to go into the minor leagues or something like that. But what he does in the next several years are going to determine if he gets in the minor leagues or not. The truth is we all have prophetic potential, but how do we walk in it? How do we really walk in the purpose that God had for us in a fullness, Jesus? We become a champion. (laughs) Now, I bet you didn't think I was going to say that, okay? Bet you think I was going to say something else. This is not a podcast about you getting healed. This is not a podcast about you walking into sermon. This is not a podcast about you feeling loved by God. No, this is a podcast about you walking in your potential. Jesus, are you going to walk in your potential or are you going to sit on the sidelines and watch somebody else do it? I heard, I'm pretty sure I might be misquoting this, but I'm pretty sure I heard Reinhard Bunky say, you know, I wasn't God's first choice. I was his third or something. And I don't know if it was a joke or not. But, you know, sometimes if you won't fulfill that purpose, God will pick someone else, you know, because God needs someone to fulfill his purposes on the earth. And, you know, it's not to be mean, it's not to scare you, but it's like God is going to get done what he wants to get done. If you want to be a part of it, that's great. But if not, God's still going to get done what he wants to get done because God will execute his plans. God is an executor of plans. This is really a podcast about winning today. And the first thing you need to know about champions is that champions train Jesus. If you want to be a dominant player in this life, you got to train. 
And, you know, you have to come to this place where you stop using the love of God as an excuse to not become who you are supposed to be. What do I mean by that? We can kind of have this attitude. Well, God loves me. You know, he understands why I'm going through what I'm going through. He knows how hard it is for me. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Yes, God loves you. Yes, God understands how hard it is what you are going through. However, this is not a podcast for you to feel good today. This is for a a podcast for you to win and take over your lane. This is not that kind of podcast, okay? If you want someone to give you a hug or you want someone to pet you right now and make you feel better, this is not what this is about. This is about you winning. Okay, because the truth of the matter is that everyone has stuff they're going through that's hard. Everyone has painful things, whether they share them or not, you know. Some of the people going through the most pain in their lives, you will never know it because they don't tell anybody. And it's like, but the thing is, they are focused on their mission. They are focused to become a champion. They are focused to become an athlete for the Lord, you know. And we basically have to become spiritual athletes, okay? Yes, God loves you, but do you want to just be loved or do you want to walk in your destiny? Now, everyone has to train spiritually, okay? Whether you're called to the ministry or not, if you want to win in this life, you're gonna have to train spiritually. Did you know that the average Olympian trains at least six days a week and trains normally several hours a day? Are you ready to win or are you still wanting to play the small game? How long will you play the small game? Jesus, you have to put in the time, hours of time, hours of time. If you want to be a spiritual giant, You have to really learn to take your cane in by spending hours before the Lord. Okay, it's time to train. You're going to have to be consistent with your time with the Lord if you really want to live up to your potential. You don't want to have to run to someone else every time you have a spiritual problem. You have to become a warrior. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need other people sometimes. You know, sometimes I need to reach out to someone and have them pray for me. But I'm just being real with you. Most of my spiritual problems I deal with. Okay, (laughs) because I have become a spiritual warrior for the Lord and I have trained enough. I have put in enough time, enough hours. If a devil comes, I'm going to get rid of that. Every once in a while, the Lord will tell me, hey, this is not for you to battle alone. Reach out to your brother or sister in Christ, and they're going to cover you and pray for you. But that is a very small amount of the time because most of the time, I'm killing that demon. Most of the time, I'm taking my land, okay? And so... I think we become more spiritual giants by consistency. You know, here's a tip. You know, if you have a planner or an agenda or something to that sort, write down every day for the next week, I'm going to spend time with God as the first thing in your planner or agenda. If you don't have that, maybe you have some kind of app or something like that where you can notify yourself, it's time to spend time with the Lord. Now, this is how champions train how much time do you spend with the Lord, okay? God might tell you that day, spend 30 minutes with me today. You write that down. I'm going to spend 30 minutes with the Lord tomorrow. Then ask him, how much does he want you to spend with him the next day? An hour. God wants me to spend two hours with him the next day. God wants me to spend three hours. God wants me to spend four hours. Whatever it is that he tells you. Like, we all have lot different lives and we all have different days. And, you know, you might have a general thing. Like, say, in general, God wants you to spend an hour a day with him every day. But then you're going to a wedding the next day and it's going to be chaotic and God says, okay, 20 minutes today, you know, and it's like there's grace, right? But in general, most days you are spending a certain amount, okay? Because that's how you become a spiritual giant and the demons actually leave. Demons don't leave from spiritual babies. Demons leave from spiritual giants. People who have been in the prayer closet are prayed up and ready to go. Are you prayed up and ready to go or are you just wishing? I don't know. I feel like we're in the week of like fire right now. (laughs) For those of you who watch my YouTube channel, we were talking about Jonah. We were just in the fire pit over there. But I'm serious. You know, I really, you know, we're coming to the end of the year and 
you know, as we come to the end of the year, we don't want to miss out on what God has for us. You know, maybe not every single thing will come to pass or whatever, but what if a lot of it could, you know, don't give up hope. We're not done yet. You start to train spiritually the way athletes train for the Olympics. Imagine you were going to, you know, go into the Olympics, you know, well, you would train several hours a day, right? Well, why don't you train several hours a day in prayer? You know, and it's not just prayer. I think sometimes spending time with God is a better overarching category because prayer is just a part of spending time with God. And what I mean by prayer is, you know, praying for things. Communion with God is the time of God. You're just listening. You're not saying anything. Reading the word is part of your time with God. Dealing with your heart is part of the time with God. You know, business planning and strategy with God is time with God, you know. And so your, your time with God can look differently, but, you know, it's like, Train with God like you would train for the Olympics, Jesus. Mm. Hmm. Um, now, some of you are doing that. Some of you are prayer warriors. Some of you are spiritually dominant. You spend a lot of time with the Lord, but the truth is you're still not getting the breakthrough that you want and you don't understand why. So let's go up another level here. It's like what I really believe with this is you're not educated in a certain area and you know sometimes we can be so spiritual you know and it's like we don't understand that different areas require different education you know the bible says for a lack of knowledge my people perish and it doesn't say for a lack of prayer time my people perish it says for a lack of knowledge my people perish and so though i obviously anyone who knows me knows that i i really want you to spend a significant amount of time with the lord every day as much as possible to really know him to really become a spiritual giant however if you are uneducated in a certain area of your life that could stop you from getting a breakthrough here's an example from my own personal life you know i was in a season of my life i think i was married one year or something and I think maybe a year and we were so broke I'm talking like we couldn't eat sometimes broke okay I'm talking I would pick the change up off the ground broke okay and but I was praying four hours a day and I just I just didn't understand that I was like God you know I'm spending time with you you know like I'm doing the work of the Lord so like why are you not blessing me financially? Like, why am I struggling in such a dramatic way? And this is not me asking for like a Bugatti or something. This is me asking for food, you know, like that's not ramen or something, you know? And I felt like God kind of impressed on my heart that I really need to get a biblical financial education. And so I just started becoming consumed with knowing everything the Bible said about money. Um, you know, and I started watching sermons where people were educated financially in the word of God. I started reading the Bible and, you know, just doing my own research and everything like that. And it wouldn't be long till, you know, we were completely out of debt. Um, it wouldn't be long until the blessing of the Lord came upon my life and, you know, and completely radically changed our lives. And it's like God gave me the blessing when I was studying finances biblically. God didn't give me the blessing when I was only play, praying, okay? Because God's already spoken a lot about money. And for us to not take what he has already given us, you know, and if you, you know, you live in a place where you don't have access to the word of God, it's like, I feel really sorry for you. But for all of you that like, have access to this first of all some people don't have access so it's a blessing in and of itself to have access the second thing is it's like you have to go okay god i'm gonna study everything the bible says about finances and i'm gonna go deep in there and it doesn't be fine it's gonna be anything you know if you have no peace in your life maybe you could study you know everything the bible says about peace and really try to apply those principles to your life because the truth of the matter is it's like God has already given us a lot of wisdom in his word. And as we seek it out, we find wisdom. And as we start applying, obviously that's the next step, applying that wisdom to our life, we start seeing breakthrough. But I do find it interesting that even though I was spending four hours a day with the Lord, I wasn't financially in a good place. 
And I became financially in a good place from learning what the word God says about it. But, you know, I, I do think that it's two parts there. I don't think you could only learn scripture verses and not spend time with God. Like you, it has to be both, right? You have to get in the presence, get before the Lord, but you also have to become biblically educated. Like without becoming biblically educated in, er in an area, that's why you're stuck. Okay. It's like, you know, before I got married, I read books on dating. You know, I read books on boundaries because, uh, my dating life was a hot mess, you know? And so it's just like, I needed to get educated on how dating's even supposed to be. And I think it helped me navigate, you know, the early stages of my marriage by knowing how to date. Um, it doesn't mean it was perfect because every relationship's different. No relationship perfectly fits in a book, but it did help me kind of like figure out like, okay, like, you know, this is how it should be done, at least generally, you know what I'm saying? And so what do you want? And what does the word say about that? You know, and can you read books on the topic? You know, can you watch videos on the topic, et cetera, et cetera. I think another phrase that God kind of put on my heart regarding this is intentional intake. And I kind of think we live in a world where stuff is coming at us all the time and it can be on YouTube, it can be on Facebook, it could be television, um, whatever, whatever platform it is that you consume media from. And you're just watching, oh, that looks cool. I'll just watch that. That looks cool. I'll just watch that. And you're just consuming a bunch of random stuff as you feel, as you feel, you know, versus asking the Lord what to watch. So that's, you know, the step second thing. And then really going into certain categories, you know, I'm going to watch every video I can find about finances. I'm going to watch every video I can find about spirituality. I'm going to find out every, you know, watch every video I can find about relationships, or I'm going to watch every video I can find about deliverance or whatever. And you start saying, I'm going to get really honed into this topic and you just be intentional because we just watch so much random stuff that really has nothing to do with our lives, nothing to do with like the breakthrough that we're asking God for. And we're just not getting educated. We're just wasting time existing, existing. And honestly, it's just sedation. We're just sedating ourselves because we feel pain because our promise won't come to pass. And so we sedate ourselves with watching bunts of mindless stuff versus using what God has given us access to plethoras of knowledge out there using it in an intentional way to learn things to educate ourselves and train ourselves so we can go to the next level you know this is a, a random thought but before we buy pieces of technology you know my husband does a ton of research he watches videos you know he reads reviews etc so we don't invest financially in things that are not going to benefit us you know he knows what we need it for and even if it helps somebody else that it might not fully work for our needs as a ministry that has a lot of videos and stuff and so, you know, we research this and then we pray about it. We ask God, should we buy this microphone for the podcast? I know that sounds obsessive, but it's like, then I know that it's going to work. <laughs> you know, it's like, so I would just encourage you, you know, there's so much information out there. You know, the Bible says that knowledge will increase and it's true, but are we really taking that knowledge and applying it to our life or are we being coming just numbed zombies dude we're just watching whatever whatever you want to give me oh that's cool that's cool that's cool and it's not intentional intentional consumption will produce results intentional consumption will produce results jesus um hmm. okay so now we've talked about education you've spent time with god so you know what you need to do you've spent time with the lord you you're a spiritual giant you know what you need to do you're educated but what's another thing that stops people from walking in the prophetic potential i honestly believe it's motivation motivation i've met some very educated very smart people probably you know have more education than me you know they have more degrees than me they're still stuck dude and it's because they are not motivated. They're not motivated, okay? You can be all prayed up. You can have every degree on the wall, but you're not motivated to walk towards your destiny, and so you are stuck. And I think, again, this comes into intentionality. Intentionality. Identifying what things motivate you and what things unmotivate you. You know, I... There are certain preachers that I watch and it motivates me. 
there's other preachers that I watch and it almost unmotivates me, <laughs> okay? Because they're just like so doom and gloom, you know, it's the end of the world. And, you know, I understand there's bad things going on. I don't want to be ignorant. I still want to be aware, but I don't want to be consumed by things that don't motivate me. You know, the Bible says focus on the pure and lovely things. And so, I want you to ask yourself the next time you watch something, do I feel motivated? Do I feel stirred up? Do I feel like I want to go do something or I want to go walk in my lane or I want to see God now or whatever? Like, do you feel a fire brewing in you for something good? Or do you feel like, wow, that was weird. And you just watch the next thing. What is your consumption doing to you? And you know, I have certain preachers that I like to watch in the morning. Okay. I know that sounds weird. But it's like, I know those are high energy preachers and I want to watch the high energy preachers in the morning because I'm like, let's go, baby, let's go, you know? And I also like to listen to high energy music in the morning. You know, I don't want to be, you know, just to, oh, oh, and I'm just like laying there and then I'm going to fall back asleep. It's like high energy music and high energy preachers in the morning. Okay. Now at night, if you're trying to get off the energy drain and you're trying to tone down, you might want to listen to, you know, a calmer thing. You know, I like to watch, um, Christian homemakers, you know, at night, cause it's more calming, you know, it's like they're Christians. They just decorate their house, you know, whatever it's, it's more chill. It's not like, let's go slay the lion. You know, it's not like David conquer over here. It's more chill. And, you know, but I, I know what mood I need to be in. I need to watch something more calming at night, you know, versus I need to watch something high energy in the morning. And you just have to know yourself and what you need. You know, if you want to work all night, go ahead and do that. I do work in the night. Okay. I am a night owl person. However, it's like in the mornings, I need that fuel. I need spiritual fuel. Give me that word. Give me a fresh word, you know, and obviously I do my own, you know, time with the Lord, but I'm talking like, you know, while I'm eating breakfast or while I'm cooking or if I'm cleaning something up or, you know, I'm just doing mindless tasks, like starting laundry or something like that. It's like, I want to, I want to, so I'm ready to get in, you know, work mode, you know, whatever. It's like, I've been motivated. I'm putting the laundry in, but I'm listening to someone that's motivating me. And so, you know, maybe put the soap operas down for a while. Okay. <laughs> maybe just, you know, over there, because it's like your consumption can really keep you stuck. And so, you know, maybe it's not consumption. Maybe it's the people you're around. You know, I had to be really in order to execute all the things I have to do, tape podcasts, tape YouTube videos, tape shorts, write books, speak at conferences, deal with people on the team, you know, be a, a wife and a mother and whatever. It's just like, I have to be really intentional about being around people that steal my energy. There are certain people when I'm around them, when I leave the room, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just need a break. I need a break from this person. And there's other people when I'm around, I'm like, okay, that was so good. Like, let's do this or let's do that. It's like, there's also people that are just happy. They're motivational. They're nice to you. Hello. It's like, you know, stop putting yourself. This is for someone right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Stop putting yourself around emotionally abusive people and then realize, wonder why you feel unmotivated, why you don't feel good, why you feel like crap today is because the people you're around. And, you know, I understand some of you, you're in a situation and that's it. Person is your spouse. And, you know, I get that. That's hard. Um, you know, I, the, one of the first guys I dated for like two years was very emotionally and phys mildly physically abusive, but very emotionally abusive. And, um, I get that. And, you know, I think something you might have to do is just create boundaries of how much time you're going to spend with them, you know, go in a different room, you know, whatever. And maybe instead be like, okay, I'm going to hang out with my girlfriends right now that encourage me, that pray for me, like whatever you got to do. It's like, because you got to be around people that are high energy, high level, ready to go. And, you know, when I say energy, I'm not talking about new age energy. I'm talking about like, let's go, you know, like I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. So don't be like, Hey, said the word energy. Now she's evil. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just like, they have energy. They're active. They want to go They're They're ready to go. And so the people you're around really does matter. And I've literally had to some people, I'm like, this steals my energy too many times. You know, everyone's going to have a bad day. That doesn't mean they need to be kicked out of your life. 
But if they have a bad day every single day and every single day, like they're pulling your energy level down, you got to go. It's like people, some people just love complaining, okay? I think we all complain at times. I'm guilty. I'm not judging you. But it's like every time I see you, you're complaining about something, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, anyway. (laughs) Another thing is to have clearly defined goals. Clearly defined goals, okay? Um, You... You can just say, I want to be successful. What does that mean? What does that even mean? You want to be successful, okay? Um, That is way too random, okay? Um, And it's completely undefined. And so I just want to encourage you, like, get really clear on where you want to go. And also, you know, visual goals. And, you know, it could be pictures of things. Or it could be just, like, this is my goal, you know? It's like... You know, maybe your goal is to get on radio. You know, maybe your goal is to meet a man or maybe whatever. And it's like putting that on the wall and then praying over that until it manifests. And, you know, you might be praying over her for a while, but as you see it every day, it reminds you and you start making actions towards that goal. And so, and then you need to break the goal down. You know, I think that monthly goals are an important thing. I really believe in monthly goals. You know, I... I try to evaluate each month at the end of the month and kind of see have we hit our goals. I kind of have productional goals, things like that. So say I want to make a certain amount of videos this month, I write that down, you know. I want to believe God for a certain amount of, you know, new new followers or something like that, you know. And we may or may not hit it or whatever, but it's just kind of like I know where we're going and even if we get further, that's better than nothing, right? And so it's like, but then it's like doing a breakdown at the end of the month and saying, why did we not hit the goals? Like, what was the issue? Like, can we figure it out? You know, what happened here? And kind of talk through it and talk about it. And so, yeah, I think clearly defined goals is important. And, you know, for me, even it's like, I might write my monthly goals and, you know, it's different areas of life, like ministry, personal, whatever. And kind of like, put it on my desk. So I have a very long desk in my office. Some of you have seen it in my um, my morning routine video. I'll link that um, up here for you on YouTube. But it's just like, I have a very long desk and on that desk, like I have like my monthly goals. And so every day I see that, I'm like, okay, like this is what I need to get done. And, you know, it's like, and, you know, some things you can only do and you hope God for the harvest, you know, like I'm going to do these things and hope that God brings in a certain harvest. And so I really try to make my goals more about me and less about what God can do. Like kind of like I want to get this done. OK, this is my goal. OK, and um, and then trust God to do what he's going to do on the other side. And so. I don't know. I think that's really helpful. You know, if you want to take it up a notch, you can do weekly. I'm really trying to get myself more into weekly goals. It's kind of hard for me. I have a little toddler running around the house. And so it's it's harder to get that weekly in. Um, but I, I want to get to that point more. But just, you know, and some of you are at this high level daily goals and stuff. And that's great. I would love to get to that place. Um, but, and I, I do in the sense of like have a plan or I want to accomplish this today. But like, you know, just a high level goal. But Anyway, so I think it's important to really have defined goals and, you know, timely specific goals is a big thing, Jesus. Um, And here's a way to not get discouraged too at that, you know, allow the Lord to set the goal. Like, you know, I can be a very, um, what's the right word, zealous person, you know, I'll be like, okay, that's it. Our goal is we're going to reach this amount of this on this date. And it's just like an absolute ridiculous goal that the Lord never said I was going to be able to reach. And it's like, and then you kind of, and then you try to throw some like random scripture into it, right? You're like, we walk by faith and not by sight. Woo! And everyone's like, yeah, but not like nothing doesn't happen because it's not an anointed goal. You know, I think the goals that often manifest are the goals that God has anointed And so I think that that's like really important is to just kind of ask the Lord, like, what are the goals you have for me? Because if he says the goals, then the goals are more obtainable than, you know, just your dreaming. And it doesn't mean your dreams might not be attainable, but they might not be attainable in the time frame that you want them in, you know? So say you want like a million followers or something like that. That's your goal. And it's like, you want that in three months and God's like, "Mm, let's try to get a, you know, a hundred first, you know, or something like that. You know, it's like sometimes we have to scale that down. You know, it's like, 
you know, there's a difference between faith and foolishness and foolishness is just, I made up something and I'm just believing it because I'm believing it. Faith is believing God, even though it seems impossible. And so faith has to do with God and God speaking. Faith comes by hearing and, you know, hearing comes by the word of God. And what does that mean? It's like, that actually means, and I think it's been misused, is God tells you something and you believe what he says. That's really what faith is. And you start walking towards it. And, you know, I also try to compare months, you know, like I'll be like, okay, like we did this this month and it didn't work. And let's look at it for the other month, you know, and just kind of comparing them and really like going through them sometimes. Yeah. On a weekly basis and just be like, and if I don't hit my goals, I, I really sit with that. And I'm like, why, why did I not hit my goals? And I, I try to be like, what's the honest truth here? And it's like, um, you know, and sometimes I don't want to change that thing. And that's okay. Like maybe that goal is not for me then, you know. And so I think just being really honest with yourself is really important too. Um, the next thing with walking in your prophetic potential is dealing with you. <laughs> and this is everything. This is everything, okay? You got to deal with you. Um, if I had not dealt with myself, I would not be sitting in this chair talking to you right now. Um, you know, I was really just dealing with me for two, two and a half years. You know, I was in recovery for maybe a year and a half. And then I went through like intense heart healing sessions for maybe another year. So altogether, it was probably two and a half years ish that I was going through intense heart healing. And I do believe that we go through heart healing probably forever. Like there's always things happening. And so, you know, God always needs to speak into our heart and like work on us. And so like, I understand that. But however, I think that sometimes you need to take a season and just really work on you. And, you know, I'm so thankful for that because I really feel like it's created a good foundation for this ministry to stand on because I wasn't known when I was going through that. Um, I did work in secular television and stuff, but I was not known in the Christian realm, you know? And so um, I just, and I wasn't that known in television or something like that. Like I was, you know, just probably a dime a dozen of people that work in television. But it's just like, I really worked on me in that hidden season. I really worked on me and it's like, I just spent that time and just really talked to the Lord about my past, allowed him to speak into it, dealt with addictive issues, cried before the Lord, got everything out of me because, you know, here's the truth. You can read the word, you can study a topic, you can be really motivated, but you can trip you up. You can trip you up. And um, there's so much inside of us going on that we need to be aware of and need to deal with. You know, we have our hearts, we have our brain or our mind and we have our conscious or our subconscious depending on what you call it there and you know i did a whole video also on that if you want to if you want to go on youtube if you're listening to spotify or if you're on youtube i'll link it here but it's just like on the conscious um and you know i think the conscious is even deeper than your heart and your mind because it's easier to hear your heart and your mind because your heart and your mind say a lot of things. Your mind might be like, this is the logical thing to do. And your mind, your heart might be like, oh my gosh, this happened to us before. We don't want to do this again, you know? And so they're always talking, your heart and your mind is talking a lot. However, it's like your conscious is often the things like a layer deep than that, okay? It's kind of like things that only the Holy Spirit can reveal to you. I've, I've been sitting in prayer before and the Lord will say to me, this is why you do that. And I'll just be like, oh my gosh, like I never thought that, like that never actually went into my mind. Like if you were to ask me, that's why I did that. I could never say that to you without the Holy Spirit telling me. And that's when God knows you're conscious and, you know, and conscious is a different word in the Greek than it is in um, mind and heart and soul. Those are all four different words there. And so there are different things that are being dealt with. And so I just want to, encourage you to deal with you because you can be motivated you can be prayed up you can be educated but you know the Bible says out of the heart flow the issues of life and you really can hit some serious walls if you don't deal with this um, because you could just go into a depressive hole out of nowhere because something triggers it you know um, you could have energy but then you don't believe in yourself and so like you start pulling backwards or you start doing self-sabotaging behaviors 
or you start thinking you're nothing because your parents always told you you were nothing or like whatever, you know? And so like, I just want to encourage you, like deal with you. Okay. And so Jesus, if you keep hitting the same walls over and over again, it might be something in your heart, your mind, or your subconscious that needs to be dealt with. And so I just really want to encourage you to deal with that. I have a heart healing book on that. You can always go into that. I know that I've had so many people tell me how that's changed their life. You know, actually, when I went to Kenya, it was crazy. We we brought a bunch of materials out there. We we taught them on hearing God. We taught them on heart healing. We taught them on discerning the spirits. Um, I don't remember if we taught them on finances. I think we might have. I don't remember. Um, you guys in Kenya, you can tell me what it was. But it's just like, but I know we taught them on heart healing because they came, so many people came up to me in Kenya and they said, the best thing you've taught us today is the heart healing. And they were like, you know, they had been doing a lot of outwardly godly things like speaking in tongues, you know, worshiping, dancing before the Lord. They had the outwardly spiritual things, but they needed that inward change to really have transformation. And so I want to encourage you to get that if you haven't gotten that before. Um, And if you have it already, you know, there's pages in the back you can use again. Um, We try to leave space where you could just do maintenance work as it comes up. Or if you've used it all up, you could do actually in the the prophetic journal, there's also places to do it on a daily thing, but you got to deal with you. You got to deal with you because I think I've noticed sometimes why I don't accomplish a goal for the week is because my emotions got the best of me. My emotions got me down in a place, you know, and I've had to learn how to regulate my emotions better in order to be more the champion God wants me to be. Mm. Mm. Speaking of that, some of the things that I'm going to be working on um, coming up in October is um, I'm speaking at two conferences in October. I'll be in South Carolina at the Daughters Dominion Conference, and I'm really excited about that. Two of our members are speaking at it, um, Denise and Tammy, and they are excited. I just recently watched a video they did where they were like, they're on fire, ready to go for God. Um, They're just on fire for God, ready to go. And so I'm excited to meet them out there. If you're a woman who's looking to take dominion in your land, come on out, um, and I would love to see you there. Or if you live closer to Ohio and or you just want to fly in and you're looking for balance in your life, I will be speaking at a conference in Ohio that I spoke at last year. Um, It's all about, you know, spiritual balance, mental balance, um, physical balance, everything. And so we have people from different categories coming out there to speak there. Um, I don't I'm not hosting either of those conferences. However, you can sign up on my website. I put links to their pages on my events tab. And also, obviously, in December, I will be doing my conference, which is the Prophetic Ignite Conference. Um, And basically, this conference is to ignite you on fire for 2024. You're going to receive a personal word from me. You're going to get prophetic planning to plan your next year. And you're going to get a corporate word for the body of Christ. You know what the body of Christ is going to be going through as a whole. And my hope is that it ignites a fire in you. And that's why it's called Prophetic Ignite. And so we're about half full right now. So if you feel it to go, make sure you sign up. And you could also do that at kanashministers.com. Just click on the event tab. Yeah, so I'll be excited to see you guys at these upcoming conferences. It's like hard to believe there's only like three months left of the year. I'm like, what in the world? But um, yeah, my hope is that I'll see you in one of those locations. And if you can't come to any of those three, then I'll see you right here on the Prophetic Podcast. And I love you guys. And I'll be coming out with another video next month. And so join me for that. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.